the best ways to contact your leads. These are power scripts that work. Okay, pick up the phone and call them. Then follow these simple steps. Let's talk about reality and successfully dealing with it. If you happen to reach somebody on your first call, the best way to begin your conversation is by using this phrase. Now, for this example, I'm going to be Pat and I'm calling Chris. Hi Chris, my name is Pat. I'm calling you because you recently expressed an interest in making some additional income by working from home. Are you more interested in a part-time or full-time option? You'll notice I did not stop and wait for a response at the beginning and I went directly to that question about interested in part-time or full-time. Then continue your interview using the questions and formats you'll find in our scripts book. There are three additional questions that you'll want to ask during your first conversation in order to get the correct tone. However, the majority of people won't answer the phone when you call and that's because either they don't recognize your number or they're busy doing something else. At this point, you need to leave a voicemail message. Whether or not your prospect responds back to you depends on the quality of the message you leave. You must not only use the right words, but you must sound like someone they'd be willing to speak with. Your voicemail message needs to be simple and to the point. So here's an example. Hi, Chris. This is Pat calling from Tampa, Florida. You asked us for information saying that you had an interest in learning more about our home-based income project. I just wanted to follow up and help you get all the information you need and answer any questions. Could you please return my call? 813-555-1234. I really think you'll like what we have and I'm looking forward to speaking with you for a few minutes. By the way, if I happen to be busy on another line, please leave your phone number and the best time for me to call you back. Once again, this is Pat and my phone number is 813-555-1234. Have a great day. Remember, if you want people to call you back, they must first understand you. Speak clearly. Don't rush. Be articulate with your words. If you have a thick accent, do what you can to reduce it. Sound friendly, but don't go overboard. Okay, now let's talk about sending a text. Since it's becoming more and more common for people to ignore their voicemails, you should text them. One of the big advantages of texting is they are read nearly 100% of the time, so you can be confident your message was seen. Again, keep it brief. Mention that you're contacting them in regards to earning additional income working from home and that you want to set up a time to discuss their options. Some reps prefer to send a text even before calling. This purely is a matter of personal preference. Either calling first or texting first can work very well. Just be sure to follow the additional scripts as mentioned above once you make contact. So here's an example. Hi Chris, Pat here. You requested information about making money from home. I'm following up as promised and have important information to give you. Please call me back to set up a time to discuss your options. What if they don't respond? Well, if they don't respond, send an email. The sad fact is there will still be some people who won't respond even after you leave a voicemail and send a text. However, that doesn't mean they're not interested. It could mean they just have other things going on that you're not aware of. Sometimes you may even get a phone number that doesn't work. It occasionally happens. It usually means that the person doesn't want to be contacted by phone. In either case, the next step is to send a simple email. The key word here is simple. Do not send them a bunch of information about you, your company, your products in the hopes they'll be interested. Instead, just let them know you left a voicemail and sent a text. Ask for them to contact you back with the purpose of setting up a time to discuss their options. So here's an example. 
Hi, Chris. This is Pat from Tampa, Florida. I just wanted you to know that I've been trying to follow up as promised, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to reach you by phone. The reason I called is that you recently requested information from us about an exciting and profitable home-based income project. I wanted to make sure you got any information you might need and answer whatever questions you'll have. I don't know whether or not you'll be a good fit for our project yet, but I'd really like the opportunity to understand what you're looking for and learn a bit more about you. Could you do me a small favor, please? Would you mind responding to this email or give me a return call and let me know if you're still looking for some extra income? I'd really appreciate it. If you already found something else or are no longer interested, no worries. Just drop me a quick email and let me know so I can take you off my list, okay? Thanks again, Chris. I hope we get to meet and talk soon. Please drop me a quick email or leave me a phone message letting me know either way. Thanks in advance. And then put your first and last name and then put your phone number and your email address below. Kiss your prospects. Kiss. Keep it short and sweet. Do not get long-winded during any of your first contacts, whether it's by phone, text, or email. Get to the point. Do it politely. Keep your eye on the goal. Your goal is getting to the next step, which is an interview with your prospect. We've got it covered. We always provide an additional 10% over and above the leads you ordered to account for the possibility of any bad records. By using these three methods of contact, you should be able to make personal contact with every prospect that you receive. Now, let me give you the map of the minefield. You've seen those old war movies where soldiers must cross a field with buried landmines, any wrong step will be deadly. However, if one of them had a map of the minefield, well, the soldiers could cross and get to the other side successfully. This section of our training can be likened to that map. Here, you'll learn about the hidden things that can blow up your conversation with a prospect, how to navigate successfully through your call. Common but unfortunate verbal missteps will generate negative responses. So if you're getting these type of reactions, you're saying the wrong things. The prospect said they weren't expecting my call, or the prospect said they have no clue why I'm calling, or the prospect said they don't remember having an interview. In this section, you're going to see how to refine your language in order to generate the positive responses you're looking for. However, always keep in mind that some people are going to be rotten apples, and no amount of verbal skill can change them into a good one. You'll need to simply move along and continue your sorting process. Interview versus Conversation Let's look at things from the point of view of our prospect. Here at Lead Power, when our phone verifier interviews a prospect, it usually takes between 30 to 60 seconds. So in the prospect's mind, it's really a short conversation and not like a job interview. In the same way that someone can't recall what they had for breakfast yesterday, something which usually takes about 20 minutes or more, your prospect may not recall having had a two-minute phone conversation with one of our people a day or so ago. Ask the right kind of questions. If you ever have a prospect say to you that they have no idea why you're calling them, it's usually a strong indication that you jump directly into your presentation without first qualifying why you are calling. You caught them by surprise and they react out of a built-in defense system. Here's an example of that using something familiar to you. You walk into a clothing store. You have your wallet with you. You begin browsing around for something you might want to buy. By all definitions, you would be considered to be a highly qualified prospect, right? I mean, after all, you took the time to come in, you have money to spend, you're in the store looking around. But as soon as a clerk comes up to you and says, may I help you? The automatic knee-jerk response from 99% of shoppers is, 
no thanks, just looking. However, if they used a different opening line, your response would also be different. For example, if the clerk opened with, hello, welcome to our store, were you looking for spring or summer wear? Your response would likely lead to an actual conversation. So, one of the first important refinements in your wording is this. Ask questions with an either-or response rather than a yes-no response. It's the difference between, may I help you, yes or no, versus, were you looking for spring or summer wear, either spring or summer. Here's how to apply it to calling prospects. Hi Chris, my name is Pat. I'm calling because you recently expressed an interest in making some additional money by working from home. Are you interested in a part-time or full-time option? There's no confrontation. You're explaining who you are and why you're calling, and then you're giving your prospect the option of either part-time or full-time. They get to make a choice. This is far better than asking a question to be answered only with a yes or no, as that often comes off as being blunt or confrontational. Remember, your call may have caught them while they're in the middle of something else. You don't want to start asking questions that can appear to be invasive or personal. First things first. The first thing any person wants to know when they answer the phone from a number they don't recognize is, who are you and why are you calling me? That is why you need to immediately identify yourself and tell them why you're calling. When you say that you're calling about their recent interest in making money from home, that should get their attention. Now they know what this call will be about, and that is always everyone's first concern. Go back to the previous section and review the opening script again. Learn it. Be able to recite it clearly and comfortably without hesitation. Your prospect doesn't know you or your voice. If you mumble or are hard to understand or you nervously flounder around, they will not want to speak with you. Their first impression of you needs to be a good one. They will determine within seconds whether you are someone they want to speak with or not, based on the first impression you create. It's like the old saying, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. Expecting. Let's talk about a prospect who tells you they were not expecting your call. Many people would think the idea of expecting a call to be related to someone they know, like a family member, friend, or coworker. It is never a good approach to start your conversation by saying something like, they should be expecting your call about a home-based business or that sort of thing. Again, review your opening script. Ask either or type questions rather than yes, no type questions. Asking if they are more interested in part-time or full-time is a power question. Get in the habit of using it frequently. When you ask it enough times, you will get enough of the right prospects talking to you. Minor changes can deliver major results. The great American author and humorist Mark Twain once famously said, the difference between the right word and the wrong word is the difference between lightning and lightning bug. Use the right words and you'll get the right results. Use the wrong words and look out because anything can happen. There's a huge difference in meaning between being put to bed and being put to sleep. <laughs> Call a woman a kitten and she may think it's cute. Call that same woman a cat and she'll be insulted. Minor refinements in your wording can create a major improvement in the responses you get from your prospects. And as mentioned earlier in this report, we provide an additional 10% overage with each order to account for any rotten apples you may encounter. Always remember, this is a sorting business, not one where you need to do a lot of convincing. Do not waste time with uncooperative or disinterested prospects. Instead, search for and focus on those prospects who are open to learning and who genuinely seek an opportunity to earn money from home. Take action. 
register for our upcoming live dial training calls. Learn the best strategies and techniques to be successful on the phone. Discover exactly how to call your prospects. Listen in as our head instructor dials and speaks with actual leads at leadpower.net forward slash live dials. Let your downline team members know they can get free leads. To get 10 free real-time leads, simply go to leadpower.net. Be sure to download and read our free scripts book. And remember, we wish you the very best of success.